the United States has lost 73% in global semiconductor manufacturing over the last 30 years and is now three generations behind the latest technology. Global semiconductor sales hit a record $550 billion, with more than a trillion semiconductors shipped in 2021. But the problem is that the semiconductor giant US was not the top producer, not even the top three. It ranked below its main competitor, China, at the fifth place. A decade before, this list was very different. Losing the top position is alarming for the US economy, given the historic importance of silicon semiconductors in the Silicon Valley. But the problem is about to get worse. Semiconductors form the backbone of the state-of-the-art capabilities for US defense forces. However, out of every 10 chips, Nine are fabricated outside the US, and seven of the most sophisticated ones are imported directly from Taiwan. This dependence on a single country can turn into a nightmare. China considers Taiwan as its own land and have threatened multiple times on taking over it. Losing access to key microelectronics is a direct threat to the US national security. Offshoring semiconductor fabrication has been the main reasons behind the loss of manufacturing. Take, for example, Micron, the third largest memory manufacturer based out of the US. The company had to offshore manufacturing to Taiwan and China due to poor government policies and sheer competition. Today, it produces the majority of chips in Singapore and Taiwan, despite the resource facilities being in the United States. Designing semiconductors is a very sophisticated process that involves a great engineering between hardware, circuit design, and software that helps the same. This forces semiconductor companies to choose one of these two ways. Either own the entire infrastructure and perform every step of chip making process, starting with fabrication, circuit design, test, and package, like Intel, IBM, and Texas Instruments, or choose to go fabless which is to outsource the manufacturing and fabrication of chips and just handle the circuit design and testing. Micron, AMD, NVIDIA, and Apple's latest M-series processors fall under this category. But note, all these companies are based in the US. So why do so many companies outsource semiconductor fabrication? Well, there are two main reasons to this. First, the US government policies and the attitude of venture capitals and Indian investors towards the hardware industry. And second, the failure to compete globally in terms of latest semiconductor technologies. The US semiconductor companies tend to struggle in terms of investor funding. Venture capitals and Indian investors evaluate companies in terms of potential market capital. Most investors prefer software companies with a few dozen employees that have the potential to scale to billions in revenue than the resource-intensive semiconductor companies which do not have an early payback. Investors in general prefer those companies that pay more in dividends and stock buybacks than the ones who invest in organic growth and research. Intel is a good example of this. Intel remained the top semiconductor company in terms of revenue for more than a decade. Instead of innovating in new areas of semiconductor manufacturing, the company focused on lowering capital expenditures. Huge profits from selling chips went in stock buybacks and paying large dividends. In fact, the shareholders elected board members who specifically encouraged this behavior. Intel realized this mistake and invested every dollar they can, decreasing stock buybacks to zero. But this understanding came a bit too late. Taiwanese company TSMC, a strong competitor of Intel, created smaller 5 nanometer chips that consumed less power and performed significantly better. Intel's fabulous competitors like AMD and Nvidia worked with TSMC to create modern chips that were way better than the Intel ones and took most of the semiconductor market. Active government support is crucial in funding new semiconductor research. Global Foundries, a US-based chip fabricator, made efforts to make 7 nanometer chips, the latest technology at that time. But later, the program was scrapped as the company couldn't get the government support to secure the $3 billion in funding needed to scale the production. 